G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I've got a pattern for you that has um, been published a long time ago in a magazine and it was first published um, called Teacher's Pet. Now I actually call this pattern Wise Guy um, but it can be used in so many different ways and it is a great gift idea. So for a graduation gift, for a teacher's gift at the end of the year, you can make it up in school colours. It's got a bit of a Harry Potter vibe about it. Um, so, so many uses for this one and very, very striking and very, very easy to make. So I've got your free pattern all ready for you as usual. It's just down in uh, the video description below. I'll put it number one in the comments for you as well. So it's easy to find and you'll find your link to your free pattern templates. You just need to print those out on your home printer and uh, make sure you set your printer to be printing at actual size in the settings and check that measurement uh, bar on those templates, making sure that uh, your print is coming out correct. And do remember that I include all seam allowances within my patterns. So who's ready to have a go at my little wise guy? So let's begin by having a look at our materials and requirements. So to begin with, we're going to need our back pieces. So they're sort of our side and back pieces and they are cut from just your quilting fabric with fusible woven cotton interfacing applied in a medium weight and make sure that you transfer all of your markings. You can see I've gone there for just a really busy bright print. And then your front piece is cut also with fusible webbing, uh, fusible interfacing, sorry, applied. And I've cut that piece from felt. You can cut it from fabric. And again, I'm just coordinating my fabrics there. You will need your front hood piece, which is just that same fabric that we used on the back. And it has fusible webbing applied because we're going to be pressing that one into place. Then you need your mask piece, which is just cut from felt with the same fusible webbing to press on there. And I'm going to be adding a little heart shape. You can cut that in felt or fabric with your fusible webbing. And then we're going to be needing eyes. Now the eyes on this project are really quite stand out in the way that they look. A very effective way to make a very um, animated looking eye. So I'm using just a a large, the actually the largest safety eye you can buy, I believe, and it's about a 29 to 30 millimeter. It needs to be that size because I've cut and designed your eye circle to suit that perfectly. So I've got mine in clear and I found them just at my local um, craft store. You can find them pretty readily online as well. And, and then I've gone ahead and because mine are clear, I've added some craft foam, some glitter foam. I've just punched a hole in that there. Slip that on the back. I've glued up the back of the eye and then press that one into place with craft glue and then let that dry. Then I've trimmed off the excess and that's left me with these beautiful glittery eyes that work with my project. Now, if you can't find the safety eyes, that's not a problem. You can go ahead and you can do the same thing with two buttons doubled up. Make sure that is a 30 millimeter button and put a dark center there. And that will work just as well. You can still use the eye surround around it and uh, pull it in and then you will just stitch that eye into place. With these, of course, we'll be clamping them into place through all the layers with their special clamp. Now, if you don't want to be doing all of the eye work there with that eye surround, you can go ahead and just stitch on your two buttons that way. Still going to be a fabulous look. So lots of options there for those, but I'll be using the safety eyes there. So from there, we're going to be needing our wings. So our wings are cut from double felt. So double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. I'll put the link up the top there to my video that talks to you about preparing your felt for sewing, where it explains more about double felt. So we've got two outer wings and we've got two underside wings. So I like to have different colors so that that color is peeping through underneath. And once we've done some stitching on there, it's really nice to have those little colors and you don't have to have them, the two colors, uh, the same joined together. You can use all, all sorts of layers, 
because we do get a little bit of turn up and you do see the underside of the wings so we've got our outer wings and our inner wings and our outer wing sorry our inside wings have our joint marks now I'm actually jointing the wings in place you you don't have to do that it's just as easy to button joint them and uh, you've got both options there but if you do want to joint them um, acrylic joints are a really good option for this project it's not often I say that but they really are these are 35 millimeter they're quick and easy and um, you can go ahead and use those alternatively just use your normal joints or as I said you'll just need two nice size buttons and we will tie those on at the end so again lots of options there now for the base of our actually there's a little trim there too for our wings we're going to add, be adding a little bit of rickrack there so a little bit of braid anything that you like there we will be needing so for the base of our owl we want our owl to be able to stand up nice and firm and I've got your template there you cut that from mat board I've cut two pieces from picture framing mat board and glued those together with PVA glue any kind of very firm dense cardboard will work once that glue is dry you'll find that's as strong as a wooden disc so we have that one ready and then you need your base felt base that covers the bottom of our owl and also becomes the feet so we have those two pieces cut there and they both have fusible webbing applied so and the only other thing we need is our little beak section so I've got two pieces of felt there I've got them right sides together and the outer sides have fusible webbing applied so we then go ahead and trace around our beak section our little template and we're going to be stitching directly on that line and then cutting out from there so have those ready for sewing and then we move on to our beautiful little cap so this is the the band for our cap and that is cut from felt this hat does need to be made from felt and that has fusible webbing applied from the band and then we have the lower side of the hat which has a circle ready for us to sew that band into place this is felt that is interfaced with uh, fusible woven interfacing it is interfaced it's just that I used black so I didn't want that white core to show around the edge so that's our first piece once please we've assembled those two We'll then use the top of this as a template to cut the top piece of our cap. So have that piece ready and interfaced, ready to trace and cut that final piece. We're also going to be needing some clear craft glue throughout this project. We are going to be filling with polyester filling and you're going to need an assortment of pearl thread or embroidery thread and extra strong thread for your sewing and we are going to be adding a little tassel on the top of that cap I've got a separate video that shows you how to make those and I will be making one up in exactly the right colors for for my project so for now we're going to start with our owl front and our first step is that we're going to iron on our hood section so I've removed that backing paper I'm going to line this all up beautifully and then I'm going to press that one into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth I'm going to do the same with my heart and I've actually given you marks on your pattern template that shows you exactly where to line that one up so your point is on this little spot and the divot of your heart is there so you'll know it's in, in exactly the right place get those both pressed into place with your hot iron and protective cloth now once you have those pieces pressed into place you can go ahead and stitch along that lower edge of that hood section I've just done that one on the machine so I want that all to sit nice and flat and I've just done a very close zigzag in a coordinating color and I've pressed my heart into place and then I've gone ahead and added that mask so the mask needs to sit about a centimeter from the top there either side make sure it's nice and even and make sure it's lined up nice and straight 
you can get that one pressed into place now while they are both uh, there I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew a blanket applique stitch around my heart and then around all the way around that mask piece now you can go ahead and just machine these pieces on just as just as I have there but these are the there's certain areas on this project that I really like to hand sew and really make them stand out so I'm sewing a blanket applique stitch so I've got my eight ply pearl thread and I have a single strand with a knot in the end that knot is holding behind I've come out right on the edge of that little shape and I'm sewing a blanket applique stitch so that's just simply going through all of the layers and bringing my needle out right on the edge of that shape and as I bring my needle out I'm bringing it out through the loop of my thread there we go now I've got a video that shows you how to sew the blanket applique stitch I'll put the link up the top for you and you can see it's just a matter of keeping your stitches nice and even and coming through that loop each time and that gives you that lovely little blanket edging with a little stitch that will go all the way around so I'm just going to continue on with that stitch and then I will go ahead and I will do the same all the way around that mask section and I will be using a dark brown so that has completed my blanket applique around both of those two pieces and you can see how it really makes those stand out there now so now we're going to move ahead to those eye circle patches now they are both uh, backed with fusible webbing and the reason for that is not for fusing in this case it's just for extra strength so I can remove that backing paper now it also makes it much easier to cut out this little inside eye shape there when it's on that paper so I'm starting with my my other one there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a really tiny blanket stitch around the entire outer edge of that little eye section the reason for that is when we add a drawstring and tie this in around the eye it really does pull on this section here and we don't want that to split or open up too much so it's kind of like a staying stitch as well so I've, again I'm using my eight ply pearl thread a knot in the end of a single strand and I've just come in between those the fibers of that felt to come out right on the edge little knot there that won't be seen so I've come out right on the edge there and I'm going to sew a very small blanket stitch sometimes called a buttonhole stitch when it's this small and coming out through the loop so I'm going through that layer all the way through and bring my needle out through the loop and pulling those little stitches in and it almost gives you like a little lash line right the way around the eye which is really nice and I do find that it shows up better in a lighter color which is why I've gone for that nice yellow keeping my stitches nice and even and rotating my work as I go so that the stitches are going out evenly so there you can see that that's just creating that same little edge that it does on the outside of those pattern pieces and it just it keeps everything together so just continue around the inside of that eye I do have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket stitch I'll put the link up there for you as well if you want to have a look at that so I'm going to do that on this one and then repeat the same process on this one now once I have that little eye section nice and edged with that blanket stitch my next step is to sew with a doubled strand of extra strong thread a close little running stitch right close to the edge all the way around that felt I've left my tail ends hanging so that I can tie a knot I've tied my first preliminary knot there and you can see that I can pull on that and gather up that eye now what we're going to do is drop that eye 
And I meant to say earlier too, I've put um, the foam, the glitter foam behind that eye, but you can put just a piece of felt, you can put a piece of fabric, anything you like behind there to give that colour. Now just pop that eye in there and we're going to pull on those threads and we're going to basically what we're going to do is tie up, bring those threads in right the way around that shank. You can seem a little fiddly but it will all come in. But what you want to make sure of is that the eye is nicely centred as you're doing that. So what we're looking to achieve is this one. So you can see how well that's come up, pulled in right the way around and then I've knotted that off four times and snipped those thread ends but you want to get that really tight and you can see that, that uh, the pupil of the eye is nicely centred there with some colour around it. So I'm just going to adjust that as I go, keep pulling and tightening that and then knot that one off as well. So now we're ready to add those eyes. Now you can see I've added my first one. I have made a nice sized hole right on those marks that I've made and I've really trimmed away. Now it depends on your eye, the length of the shank and how wide it is as to how big you make that hole. But what we really want to do, because we've drawn in around that eye there, we've really added some height there on that shank so we want to compress it as much as we can and then make sure you're putting your eye the right way up the way that looks the best and we're going to pop that one through so I've really trimmed the back as well back here so I've got nothing in the way and everything can be pushed right down that shank they're usually longer than this so I'm kind of fighting against it here but then all you need to do is add your backing disc and snap that down but be very careful to make sure you've got something under it because otherwise you'll scratch that eye and you don't want to scratch the crystal on the front of that eye. So you can crunch that down either side, get, put lots of pressure on that and you should hear it click into one of those grooves. Now. Um, if you find these hard to work with, drop them in some very hot water for a while and let them sit there for a while and they will soften up and they will snap over easier. Once you've got them clipped into place, if you feel like that's only clipped on one little ridge, go ahead and add a drop of super glue there and it'll never come adrift. So now that I've got both those eyes nicely into place, we can go ahead and make our beak. Now, as I showed you before, we have our two pieces of felt right sides together. We've got fusible webbing on the outer edges, outer pieces, and that's just for strength. It's not for fusing in this case. And I've just traced around that beak shape and then I've stitched directly on the line. So now we can go ahead and just cut that one out nice and close to that seam line. I'm just leaving probably around about two to three millimeters there now this is just the easiest way to sew a really small piece and then I'm going to take the points off and because it's felt it's on its own with just that bit of reinforcement, it's going to be quite easy to turn through. Now on the back there, you can see that I've just made a little cut through one of the layers, that back layer of felt. You can draw a little line if that helps you. It's about probably a centimetre and a half. And now all we need to do is just turn that one through that opening. And that might seem a bit daunting, but it actually does pull through very easily. Like I said, because it has that um, it doesn't have anything, no interfacing or anything on the back. So get that one all pulled, turned through the right way. If you need to enlarge that hole a little, you can because we won't be seeing any of that. And push out all of those corners with something like a, uh, a knitting needle or something like that. And now I can just add a little bit of polyester filling in through that back opening. I'm going to use my tiny forceps for this. 
just to tuck that in right the way around just to give it a little bit of volume and just define that lower point of that beak Make sure you fill out each corner, each point. And then we can just go ahead once you've got enough filling in there and just using our extra strong thread, just got a knot in the end, just going to overcast that little opening closed. So that has that beak all filled out. Now what I've done there is I've just pinned that into place. Actually, I've got my, my two um, glass head pins in black because that's where I'm gonna be adding some nostrils there pin that into place and then from behind I've just used my extra strong thread and just stitched this top back section onto the front there. You can see there that I've come through. It's very easy to do because you've got all that lovely filling and you won't see any of those stitches because you just come in from behind there and really pull in that top um, V section there and secure that. So then we've got, we want to add a couple of nostrils. Now you can use a couple of um, little tiny black beads if you like when you're pulling these stitches in. I'm just going to be using my pearl thread in black and I've made my two marks there ready because we just want to sculpt this in because this beak just on its own like that it has no shape and it will look a whole lot better if it's got some sculpting there. So I've got my doubled strand of pearl thread. I'm just gonna come in from behind on my medium doll needle and I'm going to create those little sculpting stitches. Got a knot in the end. And I'm going to dive in all the way out to the back. And this is really going to secure this beak in place as well. So you can see I've got a nice deep stitch there. Then I'm just going to come in again and repeat the same on the other side. Keep that tension up so you've really pulled that in and then knot off on the back. And that has that beak pulled in beautifully there. Now if that all seems a little bit too much like hard work, you can also substitute that beak for something like a little heart button will do just as nicely and um, or, or perhaps just the little diamond shape pressed on and then stitched around. But I like that really 3D look and uh, I, I just think it's, um, it's worth that little bit of extra effort. So now we've got our whole front section done, we can move on and start constructing our body. So we're going to take our side back body pieces and we're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew our centre back seam, which is from the top of the head. And we're going to follow that curve all the way down to the base there. The seam allowance is four millimetres and I do sew that seam two times and make sure that you back and forth on your start and finish. You can go ahead once you stitch that seam and clip those curves so, so we get a nice rounded back to the head and the back there. And I've also gone ahead and pressed the top of that seam open and flat because now we're going to be adding our front to our back. So we put right sides together and you've got your center mark on your owl front there and you want to line that up with that centre top seam. So I pop a pin straight through that centre mark at my seam allowance of four millimetres and take that pin making sure it's going straight through that seam. Right through the middle. And then you'll find it's quite easy just to line that up right the way around. I like to take my pin through all of the layers, flip it over and take up a little bit of fabric on the other side and push that pin head down. 
and then I cross to the other side and do the same thing there. Pin all the way through, flip it over, take up a little bit of fabric on the other side. That way our pin heads are pushed all the way down and they're not in the way when we're going to do our sewing. So now all I need to do is follow that line and pin that all into place. You'll find it'll line up and it'll pin all the way into place right down to the base on each side. I'll get that pinned into place and then I'm actually going to sew a, an overcasting stitch with my extra strong thread just so that I can remove all of the pins so sewing on the machine is going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to get that one all pinned and, and tacked into place and I'll show you how that looks. Now I have all of those pins out, my overcasting is done and I can tuck this one under the machine and stitch that whole seam into place. I will still stitch it two times as I did before on the back seam. Um, and you should be able to get that section under, even if you've used the large eyes like I have, you should be able to tuck that under the machine. If you have any problems, just hand stitch uh, those areas that are a bit tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that front panel stitched into place. Now before we turn that one through, if you're going to be jointing your wings, just make those joint holes there at your marks before we turn that one through. Then pull that one all the way through. Create our little owl. Lovely to see it all come together. And spend some time now going around and rolling out those seams between your fingers so that everything is nicely rounded. So now let's have a look at these wings. So we've got our body all done. We're gonna move ahead and make these wings. This is our little completed wing. You can see that one has the joint already put in there. They're made up the same even if you're stitching those on with a button. So what we start with are our, are our two wing pieces. Now, first of all, on your upper wing piece, on each of those, you'll see on your pattern templates, there's a couple of stitch, stitching lines I've put in there for you. Just go right ahead and stitch those twice. And it definitely works better with a darker thread. So stitch those into place and it just gives, gives that little bit of definition to the wing there. So from there, I've gone ahead and I've sewn a blanket stitch around the entire lower edge of each of them. You'll have your marks on your pattern templates that will show you where to start. And I have gone ahead and I'm continuing right through this project. I'm staying with my nice bright yellow for all of my detailing. And I do encourage you with this project to be really bold in your color choices because it's a very strong project and it can handle some really way out sort of colors. So seize the day and, uh, and be brave. So now we're going to add our rickrack and sew our two pieces together. So line them up at the top. And again, on your pattern template, you've got it marked there. And we just add that piece of rickrack. I like to wrap it around on the underneath. So it's all, all a nice clean finish. So I lay that rickrack straight across that line or whatever braid you're going to be using. And I just stitch straight across, really make sure I secure those ends. And that way it closes that wing section. And then we can add our joint in the middle. If not, that's fine. We'll continue on and stitch around the top there. So I'm gonna get that rickrack stitched into place. You can see that one there. See how I've just taken the edges under? I've gone ahead and added my joint through that hole. I've made my joint hole at the mark intended for that there and pushed my joint through. And whatever joint type of joint you're using, you can add that now. And now I can just close that and you can see how well that joint will be caught in between those two layers. And now I'm just going to sew those two layers together with that same blanket stitch. So I've just come in between the layers there, hidden my knot in there, and I'm going to continue on with my stitch. So it's a really easy way to put these together. So your blanket stitch, of course, 
is just going, taking a needle through all of those layers and bringing that needle out through the thread loop, pulling that in nice and firm. It's just occurred to me that this little owl has a very Harry Potter look about it. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. I would have made it all up in Gryffindor colours. I've got a couple of them there and I now know exactly who I'm going to give this to. Very excited, a beautiful newborn little girl called Harriet. So I'm excited to get it finished. So there we go. I'm going to continue on right the way around to close up that opening. Let's go ahead and add those wings to our completed body. You can see I've already popped one on there. So it's just a matter of making that hole in the side big enough. Now, the, remember the way that the wings put on, have a good look at that. So that your curve goes around the front and the wing sections, the little pretty scalloped edge is facing towards the back because it won't work the other way. Well, it will go on the other way, but that's not the way it was designed. So make sure the nice little curve and those scalloped edges going backwards. So I've pushed that one all the way through and made sure that all of that fabric is pushed down around that shank, right the way down. And then I just clip on because I'm using the acrylic disc just clip that disc on. I'm going to make sure first of all I don't have any fabric caught up around that before I really clamp that down. And then I can go ahead and really push that one into place. Now if you're using normal nut and bolt joints of course you'll just go ahead and add that nut on the back, tighten that up. Or alternatively your cotter pin joints, wind those down. And if you are sewing your wings on, we first have to stuff the body for you to be able to do that. So now that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and pack that body nice and firm, really nice and firm. And use your wool felting needle. If you have a wool felting needle, go ahead and use that as you go to pack your filling in. Pay particular attention to these top curves of the head and get that nicely packed out. I have a nice firm packed little owl there and you can see I've made sure to pack out all of those lovely curves and now I've taken my wool felting needle and really packed that filling in to create a nice firm flat base. Tucked all those fibres in and then I've gone ahead and sewn with a doubled strand of extra strong thread a running stitch all the way around that lower edge. It's just about a half a centimeter up from the bottom and left my tail ends hanging so that I can tie off. So I've just tied one preliminary knot there and now we can slip in that base. Tuck that in around those fibers. Get all those edges in. We can pull on those threads. There we go. Pull that one in. It doesn't have to be, obviously it doesn't have to be all the way to the middle, but it's got to be pulled in enough that you've got enough coverage around the edge. We're going to be adding our felt base to that. So now I will just tie that one off four times and snip those thread ends. My owl now needs some feet and a base. So I've got, I have my two base pieces here and they have fusible webbing applied to each side. I've removed that backing paper and you can see there that the first thing I've done is I've just put wrong sides together because we're not turning this through and we have gone ahead and sewn a little blanket stitch around just the feet section only the foot section there just the same blanket stitch as we did around the wings there and so next you can see you've got marks on your pattern template that show you 
little dots here on the foot section and you just draw a line down to define between those toes there and so now I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm just going to stitch back and forth just to mark out and separate those toe sections because we're getting that, going to add a little bit of filling in there so now I'm able to add a little bit of filling in the ends of each of those toes so just a little tip when you're filling them forceps are best for doing this and also fill the outer sides first and then fill that middle toe and I'm only filling up the front section we want it to stay fairly flat that little bit further back and I really pack it in there so it's nice and firm and that just gives some nice substance to those toes so now I'm going to take it back to the machine and I'm just going to follow the line of the circle and just stitch those two feet closed just around there and there now once those foot openings are closed we can now take this back to our ironing board and press those two pieces together to fuse them together because they remember they have that fusible webbing on them and fuse this whole section together with a hot iron and a protective cloth I'm now ready to glue that base onto the bottom of my owl and you can see I've applied my clear craft glue quite liberally there and I'm going to line it up at the front here so first of all I'm going to sit my little owl right down where those feet should be to give me a good idea of how that will look turn that one over and it should all line up on the base make whatever adjustments you need and just get that one pressed into place and really push that down and we're going to let that dry until it's completely dry before we do our blanket applique stitch around the base the base and the little feet are dry now and I can go ahead and sew my blanket applique stitch right around that edge there and I'm going to do that with my pearl thread I've got an eight ply and I've started just on the edge of one of those feet and I've gone in between the layers and hidden my knot in between and come out right on that edge there of the fabric so then I've made my first couple of stitches it's just a blanket applique stitch except that it's on a 3d um, project so I'm going in all of the layers and where I'm coming out normally you would come out right on the edge of the shape on your flat piece of fabric well it's no different we're just coming out on the edge of the fabric of the body so just pull that one all the way through and we're going to come through the loop each time and so in the same way that a blanket applique stitch works flat it will work in this way that it will bring those two edges together and so there'll be a nice line all around the base and it's a really lovely professional finish especially if you're selling your work or giving it as a gift you can see I'm pulling that in each time and that's joining those two together so I'm going to continue on all the way around that base and I'll just make a couple of stitches at that front section there now let me show you how to put together that lovely little cap so you've got your hat band here with your fusible webbing applied we're going to remove that and we are going to put our right sides together and we're going to stitch the center seam it is four millimeters straight down here and you have got fusible webbing on the back so it can be a little bit sticky on the base there you may want to just put a little bit of talcum powder underneath one side and it'll help it slip a little better under that machine needle so four millimeter seam allowance make sure you back and forth on the start and finish next step now is to open out that back seam and press it as flat as you can and then we're going to fold the wrong sides together 
and create a fold in the hem all the way around. We're, just, we're basically turning it up right the way around. Might help to um, crease it as you go. Because we've got this fusible webbing, we're going to be able to create that fold and press it into place. And the amount we want left showing is about a centimetre from the top. So you fold it up. I hope you can see that being black makes it tricky. So you fold it up. The first place I will press is right on that seam there. I wonder if you can see that. Where I've lined up the seam line together and then all the way around just leave one centimetre exposed and that will give us a nice clean hem around the base of that hat band. I'll get it pressed into place and then we'll be ready to stitch into the, the lower hat brim. So now I have a hem pressed up all the way around just with one centimetre remaining at the top that is a single layer. So now we're going to put right sides together of our lower hat piece and I'm just going to start on that join. Just going to pop a pin straight through there. And then I'm just going to line that up all the way around. So I'm working on the actual, the hat square. Lining it up each side. Pin all the way through, flip it over, take up a little on the other side, push that pin head all the way down. You'll find that that circle will match up beautifully with the circle of your hat band. You just need to keep pinning, fitting that one in all the way around. You can see that little band fits in beautifully to that circle and now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to sew an overcasting stitch all the way around there so that I can remove my pins and that will allow me to stitch that band into place without having pins get in the way. Now you can sew this. If you feel confident, you can tuck this under the machine and stitch this seam on, on the machine. Otherwise, you can do a stab back stitch um, just to finish off that seam before we add the top section. Just a tip, if you're sewing that band in on the machine, I find it easier to tuck it under the machine this way and sew it around this way. Much, much easier, much easier than you would think. So now, We've got that base all done and I've pressed that out nice and flat. And so now we're going to be cutting out our top section. Now we want to put our wrong sides together and we're going to just lay that flat. You can pin it or clip it and then trace and cut out your top piece. I have the top of my cap cut to match now and I've got it pinned together and I can just go ahead now and sew a blanket stitch. I'm going to be sewing mine in black to sew those two edges together all the way around, just as we did on the wings. And that will seal that edge and it make everything sit nice and flat. And I think it's best to sew it in the color of your cap so that we get a nice clean looking edge. There we go, that has our completed cap. Our final step is just to add our tassel. So I have made up my tassel in the black, but I've also put that nice teal underneath so that it shows up and it matches the wings there. So it's nice to add that little bit of color. I have the video for this one. I'll put the link up at the top there. You may want to use a purchase tassel, but these are very quick and easy to make, you'll find. So you just want to be having that little tassel just long enough just to drop over that edge there and going into the center. So I've got my needle and tassel on a thread and I will just go straight into the center, straight through the cap and knot that off underneath and that will be there in exactly the right spot.
And here we go, here is our completed little graduate. Now there is no end to the things that you can do with this pattern and definitely you could make it up in your school or college colours. What a fantastic graduation gift or maybe just a gift for to give to somebody who's going away to school. Be a lovely little um, bedside or room companion. This one will be going to a nursery. Um, for a beautiful new little baby girl so that's uh, another option you can make it up in so many different colors of course it doesn't have to be classic I mentioned the Harry Potter themes somebody needs to make one up in all of the different house colors that'd be amazing who's brave enough to make up Slytherin one we'll see won't we I'm looking forward to seeing them all I really hope you've had a good time with this one and I really can't wait to see you put your own spin on this pattern well, thank you for watching today, watching little wise guy come together. I had the, had the best couple of days making this little one. It was like working with an old friend. A big shout out to all of those of you who have come across and joined my masterclass. How exciting, what a great week it's been. And uh, I would love to see so many more of you come over and check us out. So at the moment on Masterclass, we have beautiful little Oliver who's behind me there. We have also got a gorgeous little goat art doll. I can't show you her because she's currently winging her way across the ocean to her new home. So that's very exciting. But I would love to see you all come and check us out. Maybe you want to step up and create some more complex designs. Maybe you just want to see what we're up to over there. I'll put the link down below to my Patreon Masterclass. And also, come along and join our Facebook group. So I'll also put that link down there. What a week we've had there. Some of you have been posting your creations this week and they've been outstanding. I absolutely love it when you tweak and embellish my patterns and really make them original. And that's definitely happened this week. I've had times where I've been in absolute awe and laughing out loud. So really inspiring. So come along and join all the fun if you haven't already. You know, you can always talk to me on Instagram and, uh, and of course, talk to me in the comments. Tell me what you're up to and uh, everybody most of all this week stay safe i hope you have a wonderful week hopefully a creative week make sure you pay all of the good things forward and until next time it is huru from me